Hey, fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today I was going to go over a trigonometry idea. Uh, it's the odd even identities. This is in the chapter of verifying identities. It's a big part of trig, and then it's going to turn into a big part of calculus as well. It's hard to differentiate unless you know the trig identities. Um, they are kind of complex puzzles that take a fair bit of reasoning skills, so they also build reasoning skills. I'm going to assume you know the unit circle pretty well, you know your exact values, and let's take a look at these six odd even identities. There are four odd identities and two even. Sine of negative x equals negative sine of x is an odd identity. If that's true, then it's reciprocal cosecant would also be true. Tangent's an odd. Tan of negative x equals negative tan of x, and it's reciprocal cotan would have that same property. The two even identities are cosine and secant. Again, the reciprocal. Cosine of negative x is equal to cosine of x. So let's look at this one first, cosine of negative x. So if I had a negative angle, like negative 30 degrees on my unit circle here, remembering the first term is cosine, Cosine of positive 30 would be root 3 over 2. Cosine of negative 30 would be the same thing, root 3 over 2. So I could see cosine of a negative angle is going to be equal to cosine of the angle. The other even identity, secant of negative x, that will also hold true. But secant is now hypotenuse over adjacent, whether I'm in a positive angle of rotation or a negative angle of rotation my ratios are going to stay the same because my adjacent is going to be positive. Let's take a look at sine of negative x. Sine of x, remember, the first term is going to be cosine, second term, sine. So sine of negative 30 degrees is going to be negative 1 half. Or if I do the sine of 30 degrees 1 half, multiply it by a negative, sine of negative x is negative 1 half versus sine of x would be 1 half. So that's why these are odd identities. Where that term odd even comes from, if I have a value like negative 2 and I square it, an even number, it's going to become 4. So if it's negative and it becomes positive with an even exponent, that's why these are called even. If I had negative 2 to the third an odd exponent, that would be equal to negative 8. It stays negative. So those are our four odd trig identities, and these are our two even identities. All right, let's take a look at our co-function identities right now. There are six of them. I have three of them written up here, and they're really about the complement of an angle. So all of this is right triangle trig, right? So remember, in any right triangle, if I know this angle is 20 degrees, this angle right here has to be its complement. All three angles add up to 180, but I have a right angle in there. So where our co-function identities work, let's take a look at sine of theta. In a triangle we know, let's say sine of 30 degrees. Well, sine of 30 degrees is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, 1 over 2. Now let's take a look at the cosine of its complement. So if I did 90 minus 30, I get 60. And then if I did the cosine of 60, it would now be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So cosine of 60 is the exact same thing as sine of 30. And that's where that co-function identity comes from. Cosine of 90 minus theta is equal to sine of theta. And the converse is true as well. Cosine of theta would be equal to sine of the complement. That's also going to hold true for the cotangent and the tangent. And also the tan of the complement will equal cotan as well. So we could see it here, if I have tan of 30, well, tan of 30 degrees is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. Cotan of the complement, cotan of 60, is going to be the adjacent over the opposite. So I could see cotangent of the complement is the same as tan of the actual angle. Okay, 